A hacker is ordered to pay about 1 million pounds to his victims. Valve says it's sorry. And what is homomorphic encryption? All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for August 27, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire. And now, on to the news. Chosen by your patrons this week is an outcome of a two-year-old case. According to The Guardian, a judge has ruled that a jailed hacker give up his 900,000 pounds in Bitcoin to compensate his victims under the Proceeds of Crime Act. The hacker, Grant West, was arrested way back in September of 2017 for a phishing scam targeting customers of Just Eat, which is a British online food order and delivery service. He went by the online name Covoisier and attacked over 100 companies, including Asta, Uber, and the British Cardiovascular Society, and a lot more. Information obtained was then sold on the dark web in the amount of 78 million usernames and passwords and 63,000 credit and debit card details details. Wes agreed to the compensation since refusal would lead to him spending another four years in jail. The fluctuation in Bitcoin over the past few years complicated the order, but it was eventually decided on Friday of last week. Metropolitan Police also seized other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash in their operation. Eventually, all of the cryptocurrency will be sold on the open market by an agent of the Crown. The FBI had also seized £200,000 worth of Bitcoin themselves, but that money is currently frozen under the request of the Crown Prosecution Service. It's not necessarily clear, though, if that FBI stash is included in the almost £1 million to be provided to victims. Oh, Valve, pushing away security researchers is definitely not a good look on you. A couple of weeks ago, a researcher named Vasily Kravitz, aka Felix, found a privilege escalation vulnerability that could allow an attacker to gain control over Windows machines with Steam installed. Kravitz found that he could use symbolic links to make a Windows machine launch services or executables with full privileges, leading to the potential for machine takeovers. Steam is a video gaming client that allows users to purchase, play, and build communities around games. Over 90 million users are currently active with Steam clients, with over a billion registered users. Valve, the company behind Steam, received Kravitz's report through their bug bounty program at HackerOne, but they denied it, saying that the flaw was not applicable because it required physical access. Later, Kravitz decided to drop it publicly as a zero day out of disagreement with the company 45 days after he disclosed the problem. Valve then published a patch, but the researcher said that that too could be bypassed. Now, last week, Kravitz disclosed that he was actually banned from submitting any more bugs to Valve's bug bounty program on HackerOne, though he continued to have access to the rest of the website's disclosure clients. So it was just Valve banning him. Kravitz posted a blog on his own website detailing a second privilege escalation vulnerability in Steam, since he's unable to disclose it through the bug bounty program. This one is due to Steam folder permissions, which are insecure, along with the branch registry and insufficient verification processes for the self-updating feature of the gaming client, resulting in the vulnerability. According to Kravitz, an attacker would not need physical access. At the time of his post, he had not heard from Valve, but other security researchers came out against Valve's very strict guidelines for reporting bugs, specifically stating that if a vulnerability does not fall into one of their bug bounty categories, that they simply would not even look into it. Days later, due to public scrutiny, Valve apologized. In emails to journalists, Valve stated that turning away the security researcher was incorrect and a mistake. Valve shifted blame to HackerOne's team, saying that they misinterpreted Valve's bug bounty program specs and considered Kravitz's research to be out of scope, while it indeed was within the scope of the program. Valve is updating their bug bounty program to be more descriptive and is reviewing Kravitz's ban in their program. As of the day of recording, though, he is still banned. I can definitely agree with other security researchers when stating that banning and keeping bug bounty programs so strict only causes harm to those that use the software from said companies, and it also causes rifts between companies and researchers that practice ethical security disclosure. I hope that this outcome serves as an example to other companies who have bug bounty programs. 
Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters. Personalized thank you videos are continuing to go out this week to everyone who pledged during the special offer. And also, I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as part of the ThreatWire feed. So that's my next Patreon goal. So if you want to help, check out my community. And that link is down in the description below. Also, a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them. We got tons of new ones to go through, so keep an eye out for them. Keep them coming. Back in January, CyberScoop wrote about new advancements in encryption technology. The encryption standard is backed by prolific companies and their mathematics teams at IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and many others. It's called homomorphic encryption, which is able to encrypt data while it's in use instead of just when the data is in transit through a connection or stored and at a standstill. This could, for example, protect data for users while accessing credit card numbers or passwords, as well as proprietary data sharing for businesses, hence the interest by many top brands. It was first developed by the NSA in the hopes of better protecting companies when using multi-party computing environments. In December, Microsoft open-sourced SEAL, or Simplified Encrypted Arithmetic Library, which is an open-source library that could help keep personal data private while making accessibility more convenient. This library is a form of homomorphic encryption developed by the the Cryptography Research Group at Microsoft. SEAL and other homomorphic encryption libraries can negate the need to share decryption keys with service providers or download encrypted data before being able to access it from a cloud service. Other companies hopped on board soon after, including Intel, who started using the SEAL library, and IBM, who said that they would start working on their own. According to analysts, homomorphic encryption could be widely adopted within five years and could be resistant to quantum decryption techniques, unlike current encryption standards that we use today. Now that investors are seeing opportunities, so are mathematicians who have been trying to break the code and create a perfect form of homomorphic encryption. Last weekend, representatives from Google, Microsoft, and Intel met to talk about standardizing the new encryption since it's starting to gain some traction from the industry. While slow, members of the Open Standards meeting hope that the consortium will make a proposal and start working through the process of creating standards so that adoption can actually happen. While nothing is set in stone quite yet, although I hope it does get set in stone very soon, this is a very budding topic and one of interest for anyone who wants better encryption. So I will be following it very, very closely. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you to Binary101000, Ron, Victor, George, Ryan, Tango11, Austin, Dan, Chris, Tom, Plensu, Tracy, NP, Ruben, Matthew, and Ray, who joined the Patreon team this week. Y'all are awesome, so thank you so much for the support. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.